With the government's budget in the red, the territory's ability to provide government services to its residents and to pay government employees is in peril. Joining me is the governor's financial team to talk more about the bottom line of our budget. Uh, in your opinion, where do you think the legislature fell short in terms of not passing the governor's austerity package? Well, the governor had always indicated um, if the legislature could come up with a financial plan that accomplished the same thing, which was to close the projected shortfall, that was fine. They have not quite completed the job. And most of the things that they have enacted were things that the administration had already enacted without legislation primarily through the allotment process. There still remains a gap of approximately 17 to $20 million this year, and they have not yet come up with a financial plan to close that gap. So as prudent fiscal officers, from our point of view, we will do what is necessary. Um, we have no more tools relative to the revenue side of the picture. We'll just have to continue to whittle away at the expenditure side, and primarily we're at the point where it will definitely adversely impact personnel services. There will be some government employees that, in order for us not to completely run out of uh, resources, will have to be let go. I think it's important to note also that we simply do not have any additional borrowing capacity with regards to working capital. So that is no longer uh, an option. What about federal stimulus money? Well, the federal stimulus monies, we're utilizing the, the remainder of them this year, and they will expire. And more importantly, that cushion will not be there next year. Uh, we've just pretty much tapped out um, all of the state fiscal stabilization funds and the education job funds this year. And those funds were specifically um, available to us to help uh, retain government employees. Without those, we perhaps would have, perhaps would have had to have started the, the termination or dismissal of government employees a bit more earlier. And we're in a situation now where we may very well have to do that. Mr. Simmons, how will the governor or the executive branch determine who will be laid off? Well, the determination will be um, based on uh, business needs, basically. Um, each department and agency head will review uh, within the department those programs and projects that are ongoing where employees are needed and where employees um, may be able to be uh, let go. And what's the timeline for that action? Well, we anticipate that by July 1 we would have had to have reduced our overall personal services costs by anywhere from six to 700 employees. Is there any way that this can be avoided? Uh, it depends on whether or not we can sit down with the legislature and work out some type of plan to immediately close the re remainder of the gap. But uh, we are running out of time. Um, you know, the cash flows are the cash flows. And, um, you know, uh, we've been saying this since early uh, this calendar year. Uh, the legislature needs to meet. They need to enact some measures. Here's what we proposed. Um, we are willing to discuss any other proposals that are practical. And um, uh, they have not done that. They have not closed the gap. They have not developed a plan that will close the remainder of the financial gap. Sarah, I think it's important to point out also that the Virgin Islands has done actually quite well when you compare uh, our situation with regards to austerity measures and uh, furloughs and terminations of employees compared to other uh, states, municipalities, territories that have in fact uh, cut back and downsized uh, beginning back in 2008 when the recession started. Uh, we've been able through a series of imaginative uh, measures been able to delay uh, this day of reckoning, uh, most specifically by drawing down our cash balances that were built up in better times, as well as through uh, borrowing. And the reason that we were able to borrow uh, essentially goes to the uh, RUM agreements that had been entered into uh, by uh, the administration, most specifically with uh, Diageo, uh, that uh, on the basis of expected increases in the RUM cover over revenues, uh, the financial markets were willing to, um, to grant us uh, credit uh, to take us through these difficult times. Of course, the hope is that by fiscal year 2012, uh, the U.S. and the international economy would have uh, improved uh, to the point that we would have sufficient uh, revenues from our tax base uh, 
uh, to be able to uh, balance the budget, but clearly uh, that has not been the case. While we're no longer decreasing uh, in terms of our revenue picture, uh, we certainly have not picked up as uh, rapidly as we were hoping. You mentioned the Diageo deal. When can the government expect to see some of that return? Um, Director Godley? Well, we've been, as the commissioner indicated, we've seen it already because we're able to borrow on the basis of that. But actually, we should actually be realizing actual cover over revenues in fiscal year 2012, uh, by uh, second quarter fiscal year 2012. But until then, we have to find a way out of this hole that we're now in. Do you believe that it's now the legislature's responsibility to develop a plan? Yes. <laughs> And how well, the, the legislature continued to remind us um, whenever we're there that they are the policy makers. And clearly it is their responsibility to develop proposals to generate revenue. That is a legislative mandate. And, and so they have the responsibility to find a way to balance this budget. Short of political will, is there anything at this point that prevents the legislature from enacting the governor's original proposal? No. So we're, we're not at a total loss here. There still is time to turn this around. Yes. Okay. The governor recently took a very critical tone in his letter to Senate President Ronald Russell in an effort to reinforce the seriousness of the situation and to express his disappointment with the legislature's inaction. Can you expound on that letter and maybe why it was necessary? Well, the letter was necessary um, for us to um, remind members of the Senate that they had not completed the task, that there was still a deficit that was remaining, that the proposals that were enacted did not fund. And so that was the first thing. The other thing was to also remind them of their responsibility to uh, close that gap. As the governor said, that there has been uh, some uh, lack of clear, definitive action that would fully close the, the fiscal year gap. And structurally looking ahead at 2012, unless we put some measures in place now that would reduce our expenditures or create revenues in, in fiscal year 2012, we will be in a much more difficult position where the 600 or 700 employees that we may have to lay off now would be 12 or 1,500. Okay. And we'll be right back with the governor's financial team on this edition of Eye on the Island. Eye on the Islands puts the focus on local issues and events that affect you. I'm Sarah Lazama, inviting you to join me for some interesting conversation and timely information Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. and weekends at 12 noon and 6 p.m. on the Access Channel, local cable channel 6 on St. Croix, and channel 10 on St. Thomas. With the governor's budget deep in the red, the Senate is being urged to take immediate action. I'm Sarah Lazama, and this is Eye on the Islands. Join, joining me today is the governor's financial team, and we're talking about what type of action needs to be taken and what the consequences may be if there is none. Director Gottlieb, does the, the Senate have all the information that they need to make an informed decision in terms of what austerity measures or revenue enhancement measures need to be taken? Yes. Uh, they do. Uh, they have uh, access to the revenue information which we provide. We also provide the expenditure information. Certainly they clearly know what the appropriation levels are since they are responsible for that. And we are available and we provide information as available. We shy away from providing partial information because uh, we don't want to be accused of not providing a total picture, but we provide to them what we have when we have it. Despite the fact that you open your books and that you do provide this information, do you think that there is maybe a disbelief out there or a, hesitant, a hesitancy for uh, the Senate to believe that we are actually in the position that, we, that you say that we're in? Well, because uh, I believe we've done everything that's necessary to avoid coming to this point. And uh, maybe we're a victim of our own success. Uh, but um, we've run out of options, and we have been saying that for a while. We've been saying that since 2000, late 2008, and suggested different measures to address it. But we're at the point where um, if we're, there's nothing else that we can do on the revenue side, which requires legislative action, uh, then we're talking about just the expenditure side. And at this point, our 
and that has always been our largest area of expenditures or our costs associated, associated with our personnel and fringe benefit costs. It's depending on the department and agency, uh, as much as 75 to 85% of the cost. So if we have a significant uh, problem, that's the areas that are gonna have to take a substantial hit. Commissioner Dawson, I saw you nodding your head when Director Gottlieb said that we are a victim of our own success. Do you believe that there's a perception out there that we've done so much with so little for so long that we can just keep on moving in, in that same manner? Absolutely, and I guess Director and I had together too often because she must have read my mind when she <laughs> made that statement because I was thinking the very same thing, that uh, we have indeed been a victim of our own success in terms of maybe some legislators not truly being on board uh, with the fact that we have the dire uh, financial situation that we do and that we've outlined here. Uh, and more broadly, there uh, may be a large segment of the um, broader population that similarly uh, doesn't believe that we have a financial crisis because we have always been able to pull another rabbit out of the hat. Uh, and we've done a number of these programs. Uh, we, of course, have appeared before uh, the legislature uh, numerous times, and we enjoy doing that because uh, it bears repetition, and uh, maybe by continuing our efforts to educate the public, uh, it will eventually uh, come through, short of our having to do uh, the negative things that have been outlined here. Uh, there may become a realization that what we are saying is indeed correct. And uh, uh, another point is that uh, there's so much focus on the government, which of course we're members of the financial team, uh, so we enjoy fielding those questions. But uh, we also need to uh, continue to cultivate an environment uh, where businesses, whether they be small, medium, or large businesses, uh, can thrive in the Virgin Islands uh, because that is where we're going to be able to take some of the pressure uh, for employment purposes off of the government and shift it to businesses, uh, which truly are the only entities along with the individuals that they employ and government employees that pay taxes. We know that property tax has also been a major issue Speaking of us. taxes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> when can we start seeing some of that revenue? Uh, we already are. The 2005 uh, tax bill, of course, went out some time back. Uh, the 2006, uh, which was subsequently uh, reissued and uh, revised billings uh, sent out. Uh, 2007 has been issued and 2008 should be issued within the next uh, several months. Uh, and there's a plan for 2009 and 2010. Now we realize, of course, that that does present certain difficulties and challenges. Uh, for those property owners that uh, may have expended monies that they would have otherwise set aside for payment of real property taxes. But as has been indicated by the Lieutenant Governor in his office, uh, there are a variety of payment plans that uh, exist uh, that one can go in and negotiate uh, payment schedule uh, with his office for the payment of those uh, bills. So there certainly is a recognition of the difficulty of um, having to pay multiple uh, tax years. Okay. And most importantly, uh, those uh, revenues are already in our revenue Correct. projections. They're in our revenue projections, they're in the post-auditor's revenue projections, mm -hmm. and I'd just like to make the point that the post-auditor's revenue projection and our revenue projections are pretty much in sync. If the governor or the executive branch really has to take that last resort and cut personnel, is there is no doubt going to be some public backlash or outcry. Is this something that we can expect or, or should people be surprised by this? Uh, for the majority of the public which tunes in with uh, regularity to our appearances at the legislature, we have been saying this. Um, We've been saying this, I, I am not sure why anyone would be surprised other than we are not able at this point to do anything else. We've done pretty much everything else. Um, uh, without further assistance of the legislature, we're talking about reducing the expenditures, the significant expenditures are associated with our personnel and associated fringe benefit costs. Okay. Commissioner Dawson, uh, these budget cuts kind of go across the board in terms of what we need to do, but only two branches of government have really seen those cuts. The legislature has not enacted any cuts of its own. Uh, what are your feelings on that? Oh, well, as the governor has indicated, it's really only fair and equitable that all three branches of government share equally 
and the pain that has to uh, go around. Uh, and also independent instrumentalities uh, which receive contributions from the government of the Virgin Islands, such as uh, the University of the Virgin Islands, uh, director, who else? Uh, waste management. Uh, waste management. Uh, those are two uh, prime examples of uh, agencies that uh, need to share the uh, pain uh, uh, completely uh, with the executive branch. Okay. And Mr. Simmons, what is the big picture here if we don't start implementing these cuts in a significant way? Well, in terms of the administration's position, we recognize that we have to begin to reduce our expenditures, which are our personal costs, as Director Gottlieb said, is our biggest expenditure. So we have begun the process of um, alerting departments and agencies as to the requirement that they have to reduce their personal services costs, which has to be done by July 1. So unless we're able to come together with the legislature and develop some alternative funding mechanisms that will uh, bridge the shortfall, then uh, we're prepared to move in that direction. So this is not a case of the boy who cried wolf. The governor is prepared to move forward with these um, personnel cuts. Oh, definitely. Okay. And do you believe that the, the Senate believes that that really will happen? I'm not sure what they believe, and I certainly would never attempt to speak for all members of the legislature, but I know what we have to do, and we will do it through uh, the allotment process. We will notify departments and agencies accordingly. We will involve them in the decision making, and they will determine, best, based on their best business case, what are the priorities and how they choose to implement it. It may not be, the, it will not definitely be the cookie cutter approach where everyone will do the same thing, but based on, you know, their individual circumstances. So our department heads and commissioners, have they already been informed to maybe start making that list as to who may go or what services might need to be reduced? <coughs> uh, the governor talked to the members of the cabinet, uh, myself included, at the last cabinet meeting, and we indicated that we may very well be at this point because we had had signals that uh, maybe the legislature and us had not been in sync. So we have been preparing um, uh, the chief negotiator have been, has been providing information as well as the director of personnel and we stand ready to support them and assist them in that decision making process. Um, of course I will let them know what the number is and they will tell us um, exactly what sh they intend to do to, to hit that reduced allotment level. Director, how much does it actually cost to run the Virgin Islands government? Well, that number has been changing, but um, the net figure hovers somewhere in the neighborhood uh, of about $800 million. And um, our budget is generally somewhere overall, the general gross budget is somewhere about a billion. Where in your mind do you think that we could effectively reduce expenditures? As we've indicated at this point, we've been doing all of the low-hanging fruit. I mean, we've had a, a limited hiring freeze. We've been doing the attrition program. We've been looking at our energy costs. Uh, we have looked at some of the other soft areas, the transportation, the travel. Unfortunately, training has always been something that you know, takes a hit. But we are at the point that those things by themselves will not close the gap. We are the things that uh, are the significant impact, which is the personnel and the related fringe benefit cost. And uh, there are several ways of doing it. You can do it where you share the pain, uh, furlough, reduce work week, unpaid holidays, or in some instances, you can just talk about reducing your workforce. And I think we are there now. Okay. Well, unfortunately, some of those other things that we had talked about earlier in terms of furloughs or um, uh, unpaid holidays were rejected by the Senate. Had, had we implemented some of those measures earlier, then probably we would have been able to continue to not have to reduce the workforce at this point. But uh, unfortunately, that was the decision then that the Senate was not going along with us. And so now we're at the point where we have to make a significant reduction in cost, and, and that can only come out of personal services. Okay. Well, I thank you all for joining me today. I appreciate your perspective on the budget, and we'll all be watching and waiting to see what the Senate does. And that's it for this edition of Eye on the Islands.